Tsunami Studios. Disenchantment, Season 3. Now, here is a show that I always forget it comes out. You know, like, it's, it's just one of those ones that I'm like, oh yeah, they make this still. It's coming out soon. It came out this week, actually. And another 10 episodes of it dropped, and you're like, oh yeah, I remember this. I don't remember what happened last season. I don't remember how that finale ended. Wasn't Beanie being like burned at the stake or something and then they get a recap I'm like oh yeah that is what happened so it's out season three's out or part three depending on how you look at the way they do their releases it's fine like i i really want this to be more than what it is if that makes any sense you know like it's good for the most part i think there's some very enjoyable moments in this season the show overall i like i don't think i hated an episode or disliked where it went I just don't know if the jokes land every single time and that's kind of infuriating and I you could you could say it's about as good as the mid run of the Simpsons you know where it's like we're out of the golden age we're in that like seasons 12 to 20 era where things are consistent and they're fun but they don't have that oomph of the original like golden era of the Simpsons now I still laugh. I still think there's moments in this show that make me laugh. A lot of stuff with King Zog makes me laugh. A lot of stuff with Elfo, I think, makes me laugh. There's just other moments I'm like, yeah, okay, I, I get it. You go to a lot of interesting places in this series, and there's kind of like this overarching story that goes in between every episode, and I get why you do that. You have 10 episodes, you should tell as much story as you can, but I'm also kind of like, can we just do like the week by week thing? where like every episode doesn't connect to the last one and we don't have to have like an overarching story. Like we can keep King Zog being mad throughout this entire season, but why do we have to like have a narrative where like one episode bleeds into the other one and it's like going back and forth and it 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 kind of hinders the show to me because the episodes that I think are the strongest in this season in particular are the ones that don't really have the connection to the other stuff like the one where they go to uh Oh, what's it? The, the 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 pig king, the guy that was the king, and now he's a pig, and they go to like his kingdom. That was funny. You didn't really have any connection to the main main story. There's an entire episode. I think this was actually the best episode of the season. There's an entire episode dedicated to Bean and Elfo trying to like overcome their ideas of love or why they never really felt it. There's a great like dialogue in there between Bean and another character named Mona. And you're like, that's kind of fun. Like, you, you want that to succeed, and you, you, I like where that's going, but then it's, like, undercut by a lot of, like, the other big overall story going through. But if this was just, like, this episode's here, this episode's there, and they don't really have any overarching storyline, I think that would have worked better for the show and just have a really more interesting narrative being told. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, and I, I'm missing something about this. But I get the feeling a lot of people, like, see that, too, where... I, the show's consistent. I will say that about the show. It is very consistent in how it does its humor and its story. The characters are funny. They're interesting. You like them for the most part. I think the voice acting is really good. It's your, you know, it's your Simpsons cast. It's your Futurama cast, but they do great. You know, the leads are not obviously from those shows, but they do a really great job of like making that feel real. We go back to a lot of stuff we've seen in previous seasons like Steam World, which I'm I get SteamWorld, I think it kind of takes away from, like, the overall flow of the show, you know? Like, uh, it's just sticking the fantasy, I think that's where it goes, but I understand, like, the, the cusp of revolution and technology and stuff, that's an interesting area to play in. I don't think it's that strong and it didn't really make me feel anything. I think the same could be said about the stuff with Bean's mom. I think she's an interesting character, and I like that we got some more moments with her, but there's just something about that character, and, like, we spent a lot of time there where I just felt we didn't need it, you know? Like, I get we're a comedy and we're telling our story, but you don't need to spend that much time here because it feels like we're just making stuff up as we're getting there. There wasn't really, like, a, like a through line for that character, and I get that, I guess, but it's just kind of it didn't go anywhere interesting or really make me think or feel for that character or that storyline in any regards, you know? It's such an interesting show just because I want it to succeed, you know? I want this to become a Futurama. I really do, but I just don't know if it has that capability or the range to get there. I've, I thought it would, it hasn't, and that kind of sucks. Maybe after a few more seasons it will be like regarded like that, but I don't know if it's going to get there. I don't know. It does this thing again where it ends the season on a big cliffhanger, and I, I don't like when a, when a show like this does that, because why? 
just end your show with a big episode, you know? Like, that's not a big deal or anything. It's just nice to have that, like, sense of finality to it where you don't have to, like, get me anticipated for the next season and just assume I'm going to watch it because I'm a loyal, interesting character. Like, just because I want to watch it, you know? I'm just like, okay, what? okay, I get it. There's some stuff in here that just feels like that, and it's kind of annoying. Like, it's trying to... It's trying to pique my interest to get it to watch it instead of actually being captivating. It's trying to force me to be interested in it. I don't know. I, I, I really want to like this. I, I, I still think it's funny. There are some really good jokes in here. There's some really interesting stuff that lands very well. Like I said, King Zog's like, storyline. I think there's something really cool in there. The show handles this idea of depression really well, which I'm very surprised by. Especially in the character of Elfo. I'm, I'm just like... He's he's a very interesting character that you could easily just do like a one note joke with, but they tried to like change up his routine and do other stuff with him in this season, and it worked. I would say I think it was just like the idea that he falls in love so fast and he gets hurt because of it. I think it's pretty compelling. It actually made me laugh and like that character in a different way. Like I said earlier, the thing with Bean and that mermaid that she is friends with, that's a great storyline. I think that was a really nice way to give a little more depth to Bean that we didn't really see before. So that was really cool. And I just think as we get to like the overall story of like the kingdoms clashing and the villains and all these like prophecy and the legacies and stuff, that's where it starts to like peter out and not be as interesting or captivating as just the random jokes and the quirkiness. You know, Futurama had its like long running jokes, but every week was something different and you didn't have to, you know, binge them to get like a full story, which is fine. I don't have an issue with binging. I It's not something I enjoy doing, but like it's 10 episodes. They're approximately 30 minutes each. So it's a quick breezy one and it's going to go back into obscurity to a cartoon that I'm probably not going to think about till they announce season four. And I'll be like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's how that ended. And then I'll just do another quick thinking about it and I'll never talk about it again until season four comes out. So it's sad that that's what this cartoon has become, but at the same time, what else could it be really? <laughs> like it just really hasn't gotten that push like a Simpsons or a Futurama, which sucks, but it is what it is. So it's not going to disappoint you watching it. If you're mixed on the show, you'll continue to be mixed in this season. If you like the show, there are a lot of moments you like, but if you're getting sick of like the overarching narrative, it's not going to do any favors for you. <laughs> so uh, give it a watch if you're interested. I do think it's going to make some people happy or not. I don't know. Disenchantment season number three. I am going to give a six out of ten. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.